Hello everyone, today, we are going to make a lightning effect. We can attach these lightning to any meshes. Here, we can try to attach it to the cube. Of course, we can also attach it to the cone. Okay, let's see how to make this effect. First, let's take a look at its material. It is a very basic lightning material. Here, we use a lightning texture. Then tile this texture. Add a noise to it. And connect our output result to the mask to create an effect of emitting lightning. That's it. Very simple. Then, let's make Niagara system. There are also two methods. The first is to use particles to create this effect. We use particles to simulate the track of lightning. Then attach ribbon to the particles to create an effect similar to lightning. We first modify its life cycle. At a spawn rate, 25. Lifetime, 0.7. Color is 1, 1, and 100, a blue color. Position and size do not need to be set. We need to add static mesh location. Create a static mesh in user parameters. Its sampling type is triangle, no problem. Okay, now let's add a shape location. Mode is plane, and plane size is 1000. Finally, we need to set particle position to shape position. Then, in particle update, let's add some force modules to simulate the track of lightning. First, add a linear force. Subtract the particle position from the sampled mesh position. Then, we add a curve and float. From 0 to 1, alpha is 25. Coordinate space is world, OK? Then we add a curl noise force at same. A random range. 200 to 500, B is a curve, from 1 to 0, and alpha is 25. Set these parameters to make the track of the particles change randomly. We can also add a jitter position. This will make the movement of particles a little jittery. It will look more like lightning. Just keep the default here. Then, we need to add a location event to track the position of the particles. Enable requested. OK, let's put this Niagara in the level. Attach it to static mesh. There seems to be something wrong. Here, the start position of the shape needs to be changed to the simulation position. We can see, after the particles reach our sphere, they will spread outwards. We can limit its speed. In solve forces and velocity, add a lerp and speed limit. A is 1, B is 10,000, which is its maximum speed. Alpha we need to use a normalized distance range. Start position is particle position, in position is sampled mesh position, and distance is 1,000. That should be about right. It looks a little wrong. We set it wrong here. It should be the sampled mesh position. That's right. The particle speed will drop to 1. After it reaches the sphere, it will no longer fly out. OK, now let's make ribbon renderer. Create an empty template. Change the life cycle to self. No need to spawn particles here. Particles lifetime is 1. Ribbon width is 5. And we add a jitter position. Also keep it at 5. Delay is 0.05. And scale ribbon width. We will adjust this later. Add a ribbon renderer, then put lightning material on it. There is no effect at this time. We need to add an event handle. Select spawned particle in location events and receive location event. We can see that there is a ribbon effect, but we haven't set the dynamic material parameters yet. There is a mask parameter that controls the display of the material. Change the tiling to one and we use a curve from zero to one for the mask. 
Then set key data to 0.5 as the maximum value. Set ribbon width scale to 5. Now we can see its effect. Then let's unify its color and receive location event. Apply. Let it keep the same color as our particles. In the ribbon renderer, we can change its curve tension to 1, or use custom to change tessellation angle to 0, so it will not look too smooth, more like lightning. Of course, if we want a smoother effect, we can copy this emitter and change it to 180 here, and 0 here to get a smooth effect. Combine them. Looks good. Now we can adjust its ribbon width, like this. Copy this curve to another lightning emitter. Finally, don't forget to set its particles to zero and the size. In this way, the particles will not be displayed, or delete the particle renderer directly. Now we can select the mesh and the user parameters to attach the lightning to it. Okay, this is the first method, now, we briefly talk about the second method. You can directly use a static beam to make it. Create a new empty template. Ribbon renderer. Apply the lightning material. Loop duration is 0.1 and spawn burst 100. Also add beam emitter setup. In the initialize particle, set ribbon width to 5. Add spawn beam so we can see the ribbon effect. It's a bit small. Change the width to 20. The end position of the ribbon, we can set it to random position, minus 1000 to 1000. Add a blue color. Then we just need to set the start position to the sampled skeletal mesh position. Add a user parameter to facilitate us to select the mesh in the level. The sampling type is triangle. Find the emitter parameter, sampled position, and apply it to the start position. OK, we need a skeletal mesh in the level. Now, we will find that the start position of the ribbon is always one point. So we need to change spawn only to every frame in the sampled skeletal mesh. That's it. The sampling is the triangle of the entire character. The Z axis is also set to minus 1000. This way we get a similar ribbon effect. We just need to add some additional modules to make it look better. Okay, so that's all for this video. I hope you like it. See you next time. Bye.